In our next piece, Alan Wilson speaks to Kevin Turley about the life and faith of his son, Joe Wilson, who died aged 17 from a rare undiagnosed heart condition. Filmed at Carfin Grotto, the National Marian Shrine in Scotland, where Joe would spend many hours both alone and with his family, this programme reveals an unusually strong faith in one so young. Yes, he was a very prayerful person who lived his faith openly, loving others without exception, so that the night before he died, whilst he lay in a coma, several hundred people spontaneously gathered at the shrine in a candlelit prayer vigil. His father describes how there is now a growing devotional following of Joe and how he leaves a lasting legacy for those who knew him, as well as touching the hearts of those who are coming to know about his life. It's a very moving story, so let's take a look. I've come today to Scotland's National Marian Shrine here at Carfin to meet Alan Wilson to talk about his son Joseph who died aged 17 but still leaves a lasting legacy amongst the people with whom he lived. Alan, pleased to meet you. Hi Kevin, how are you? Welcome to Carfin. Thank you. Now I've come today to talk to you about Joe and uh, tragically you lost Joe how many years ago? That's now eight years ago, his anniversary was actually just yesterday. What year was he born? Um, Joe was born in 1994, um, 12th of December. And if you speak to anyone about Joe, his friends, his neighbours, um, even teachers, you know, anyone he'd go in contact with, you would get exactly the same story from him. He was such an engaging young chap, polite, I've got to say handsome. <laughs> yes. But he was also, he was very tall, six foot two. But he was the kind of person, when you were talking with him, no matter who you were, he would find something to talk to you about. You would feel as if you were the only person in the world at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, he really had, he, he just captured you. But he didn't impose his personality on you, he was more interested in you, you know, and to find out what you were like yeah. and, yeah. you know, the, your interests and whatnot. And he was also very devout in his faith. Um, a lot of folk ask me the question, where does he get that faith from? And it's, it was inherent in him. A few examples, if we go back to primary school, and if I think of the first parents evening we went, this is primary one, so this is Joe at four and a half, five years of age. Mm -hmm. And his primary school teacher, Mrs Henderson at the time, she said to us, you know, your boy, there's just something really special about him. At playtime, he goes out and he just looks around the playground and he sees who's not talking with anyone, who's not playing with anyone, who's not engaged. And he'll go over to them and make sure they're all right and get them involved in something or, or get them working. So that was very obvious from a very young age. Um, but this is the place that we're in right now, the Carfin Grotto. It's, uh, I've got to say one of his favourite places and he would come in uh, a lot of times with his mother and just wander around as we're doing just now yeah. and they'd be just chatting about the matters of the day and, and you know praying together and whatnot. He was certainly, he was a devotee of the rosary, yes. you know, so he would say the rosary often and I'd recall Veronica would tell us quite often he would come home from school and he'd say, right, right mum, here's what's happened. Come and say a rosary with me. Really? Or his favourite prayer was actually the Angelus. So he's a man of prayer? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was a sort of person, you know, if we were talking and if you said to me, Kevin, you know, uh, my aunt's not well or, you know, or, or I've got, you know, somebody that I know could do with some prayers and help, Joe wouldn't just log that in his mind. He would actually stop and say a prayer right there and then for them. You know, just as uh, we're kind of instructed to do. But he lived his faith absolutely um, he wore it in his sleeve you know he, he just you just knew when you were talking to him he was a man of God so it's fair to say um, Alan that Joe is still very much part of your family and always will be I guess oh yes well the, the way I the way I put that is when your child is born what do you feel you know you feel elated and it's absolutely fantastic it's the same when your child dies in the opposite direction. 
But also, when I think of Joe, you can go several ways with this when your child dies. You can go really down and depressed and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I don't get down and I don't get sad. Of course I do. You know, of course I do. It's a very natural thing to do. But the other thing I think of is you always want your kids to be happy. No matter what they're doing, you just want them to be happy. So, if I could talk to Joe just now, and I could say to Joe, what would you like to do? Would you like to be here? Or would you like to be up there with God doing God's work? He'd tell me two things. He'd say, I love it up here doing God's work, and I'm just so happy. Now, as a parent, what else do you want for your child? You know, so it's, that helps me personally when I'm in my, my lowest ebbs. One of the things, Alan, about uh, Joe is that, like St. Therese, he left, uh, he left a diary. Yeah, I did. it was a pleasant surprise. I was preparing for a memorial service that the school were having, and I was looking for inspiration. And I went up to his room, and I just, I was looking around, and I saw school jotters. So I thought, I'll look at his handwriting, and that'll make me think about Joe and whatnot. And I started flicking through the jotters, and I'm starting to read, and I'm saying, this isn't business studies. <laughs> this, is, this is his life, you know, and, and diaries, and it's, it's the life of a 14, 15, 16 year old, but all the things that go on in your life at that time. But the thread that came right through it was talking about his faith and how when he needed help, the number of times it would turn to God, he would turn to Jesus, or typically he'd say, I've just prayed a decade of the rosary there. You know, so it was, it was wonderful to find. Veronica and I had a conversation with Joe a week, two weeks before he died. And he said, um, he said, as I said, he, he, he was looking to study medicine, he had applied for medicine. He said, look, I'm, I'm having a wee thought, he says, I really got a strong feeling that I want to help folk spiritually. And I can't help thinking that with God taking Joe, he's getting his wish. Yeah. You know, he's, he's impacting in a real positive way so many more people now than they ever could if he was here. So that we've now set up Joe's faith, which is basically using Joe as the example and holding devotional events. We've now held four devotional events, all here in Kerfin. Mm -hmm. And there's almost 200 people been coming along to each event. The diversity of age group and people that are coming along. There are so many young people coming along. The wide range of, of personalities that that you know, Joe's inspiring. Are, are you know that that coming out to see Joe? It's just it's it's really really good. And the Joe's Faith Group, it's it's nice to be able to bring some goodness to the world. <laughs>